one, it's a safe place to go to if you're, you know, feeling sad in life or if you just need somebody to go to and, uh, you know, it's a fun place to go there, worship, you know, meet people, meet friends. I don't really like church. I, uh, I've had a few bad experiences, I think. It's not really the church, it's the people. Um, a lot of hypocrites going to church. Um, I don't believe you have to go to church to be close to God. Um, I think that it's a great place for people to come together and worship God together. It's a, it's a community for people and it's positive so when good things happen in your life they celebrate it and when not so good things happen in your life they're there for you and they help you get through things so you feel like you have a support system. Yeah, the first thing, I'm a Muslim, I don't go to church, but I respect the people go to church and I respect the churches. Well, today we're going to Burleson, Texas to the Burleson Seventh-day Adventist Church and along the way, we're going to pick up Sergio, Michelle, and their two kids. So thanks for joining us. This is Good News TV on the road. First of all, Michelle, um, tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, where are you from originally? I was born and raised in the country of Sweden. Uh, Sweden? Is, yeah, northern Europe. And uh, grew up uh, in the mission fields, been traveling a lot with my family and living all around the world. Um, wow. Yeah. Wow, and does that mean that you speak uh, a variety of languages? I do. I used to speak a lot more, but I'm proficient in five languages right now. Wow. Are, are, you, are you able to keep up with your wife, though, <laughs> language-wise? <laughs> you can keep up in two languages. <laughs> but, uh, you, you are pretty good at understanding Swedish when we talk around with my, speak with my family. He keeps up. He can understand what we're saying. So, Sergio, where, where are you from originally? I'm born in El Salvador, uh -huh. and uh, my father is from Guatemala, my mom from El Salvador, okay. and, uh, but I carry the Guatemalan citizenship ever since we moved here, and uh, I went back to uh, live with my grandparents hmm. for about five years, mm -hmm. and that's pretty much where, where I decided that I was going to carry the Guatemalan citizenship, so anytime they ask me, I say, I'm from Guatemala. <laughs> awesome, awesome. I've got to ask you about Burleson. Why did you guys pick Burleson? I'm not really sure if we picked Burleson or Burleson picked us. Wow. <laughs> um, it was, uh, we've always, ever since we've been married, uh, we've always been extremely involved in the church that we've been going to and uh, we were going to a different church. Uh, we were involved in children's ministries and media and singing, um, all that stuff. But um, there was a time where we were pretty badly hit by the recession personally. And uh, so we had to move quite a bit away from, from that situation. So when our oldest daughter, our seven-year-old, started uh, attending the Burleson Adventist School, mm -hmm. We just uh, found ourselves coming to Burleson Church quite a bit, and uh, I think we both had felt it and thought of it at around the same time, but not really talked about it very much. Mm -hmm. But we just kind of looked at each other and said, why don't we move our membership here? And it felt very, very right. It felt very just like coming home, and it was, uh, it was a huge blessing when we just we started coming to Burleson. That's great. It, that's a tough feeling to ignore, huh? If you yes. feel like you're coming home, yes. you know that's where you need to be. So, um, I'm going to Burleson today. What are we going to see? What's it going to feel like to us? It's going to feel like you just come to a big family reunion. What, what would you say, if you were to say in a few words, 
you know, your favorite thing about uh, Burleson? I think I would have to, uh, I would have to say that the family aspect of the of the church. Mm -hmm. That's that's what drew us to church. Gotcha. And that's when we looked at each other and we said, um, I think we should move here. You yeah. Know, it's, uh, there's a lot of things that that are telling us that that we should be part of this family. So it looks like we're about here, um, and it's kind of interesting, it's on I-35, right on a hill, so you can't really miss it, can you? No, there's, there's no way to miss it, and uh, a lot of reasons why we love our church is uh, we, it's very easy to find it, and uh, a lot of people actually know our church from our 4th of July celebrations, where we have a big family fest, and a lot of activities outside, and the whole community can come and bring their lawn chairs and sit here and watch the fireworks and it's, really? uh, yeah, a lot of people. It's the highest so, place in Burleson. Yep, so. it is. It's, it's a, the perfect place to watch 4th of July uh, uh, fireworks. So oh, a lot awesome. of the community knows that from uh, from that experience. So yeah. Wow. We, uh, it's a perfect uh, situation for for the church. It's a perfect place. Church on the Hill. Yes, it is. <laughs> It was a cold Saturday morning, but we were warmly welcomed at the Burleson Seventh-day Adventist Church. Following Sergio and Michelle to the kids' classes, I had the privilege to see how parents and teachers are working together to teach the little ones about Jesus and His great love for them. With all types of activities, kids learn to be part of God's family. Sergio told me that classes start every Saturday morning at 10 o'clock for both kids and adults. At 11 o'clock, with a sense of reverent anticipation, the Burleson Seventh Adventist Church becomes one big family, looking forward to worshiping God together. So Maria, I really love the worship service today. It was really awesome. Um, so what goes into preparing this uh, service uh, from the worship standpoint? And uh, what is the inspiring factor for you as you're leading out? One of the things that I love the most um, is that it's not just one worship leader. I'm one of four. I think there's three other ones. And we um, each have our rotation and we each involve different people to be part of it. And so it's not just five people that we're involving in the church and music because we have a very musical church. So um, we're involving lots of people and um, I, I love it because I love seeing everyone involved and I love seeing everyone sing and, and worshiping with us in the audience too. And 
probably my favorite part about leading worship is just leading people into that experience of encountering God and 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 seeing him in a different way than maybe they weren't expecting to. I think that music adds a different element to the service than maybe the sermon or even children's story. People will see a different picture of God. So when you guys got here, I've heard that you started a new ministry. It's called the Green Room, and uh, I, my guess is the green the room's not actually green. <laughs> but so, what's it about? The ministry was created for high school students. We, I love high school students. I know Ryan does too. We've been involved in ministry with them before, and this church has so many kids that when they come and they they go through school and graduate eighth grade, when they finally get into high school. Um, we just saw a, a need there for that ministry. And so the green room is to provide um, a way for these kids to get involved in ministry, to see God and develop that relationship with him. It's based on four basic principles. Know God, um, know others, be accepted and be yourself. You know, if for any reason in your past or in your present, you have been shown an unbiblical, unloving picture of God. I just want to say I'm sorry about that, and I know God is too. I'm sorry. Ryan, I've got to talk to you a little bit about your sermon this morning. I was yeah. really blessed, first of all. Praise God. You made an apology during the sermon today. Yeah. That really touched me. Why? Well, the apology I made was, I guess, in my mind, I was wanting to apologize on behalf of Christians who may have painted the wrong picture of Jesus before to mm -hmm. other people. Yeah. Um, I think it happens all the time in the church, and it's unfortunate. But some of us even may have been there ourselves before and may have done a disservice to God by giving the wrong impression of who he is or maybe treating somebody in a way that was not Christian. And so... I just, I wanted to, to reach out and to kind of grab people's hearts and say, you know, God also wants to help clear these things up. You know, he wants mm -hmm. us to know who he is, but I'm sorry if, if that's happened to you. Mm -hmm. And I know God is too. Why church? Yeah, that's a good question because, you know, a lot of people uh, don't see the value in it. But, you know, I, I know that there's definitely value, uh, Pastor Ray, in people having that one-on-one -on -one time with God. There's no mm -hmm. question. But God has created us as social beings, you know, mm -hmm. to, um, to have uh, something special that the Bible calls fellowship um, mm -hmm. with one another. That, um, that, that, that's something that cannot happen just by ourselves. We can have fellowship with God, but to have fellowship with each other. You know, I look out at the church family on, on every Saturday, and I see people just enjoying spending time together as fellow Christians, and there's nothing like it. Uh, can't be substituted. If you were to boil down Burleson and maybe a sentence or two, yeah. how, how would you describe the feel that you get when you yeah. come to church here? Well, obviously, there's lots of kids. Um, and that's because I think a big part of that is uh, we have a school that we, we're big believers in Christian education. Mm -hmm. And so family is huge. 
Um, uh, Christian education is huge here. And I, I think the third thing I, I would say is outreach. You know, this church cares about its community and loves mm -hmm. reaching out to them and helping them and ministering to them however they can. is the principal for the Burleson Seventh Day Adventist School here in Burleson, Texas. And Norman, what's it like for you to be the principal at this particular school? I just feel like I had the best job in the world. Gabriel, what's the first thing you think about when you think of BAS? The best school I've been to, very unique. Uh, I think the teachers, they're, they're really fun and uh, they're, they're still hard but they're really nice. Well, I think it is like the country. Well, the people here are really, really nice. Everyone makes you feel accepted and wanted. Uh, I'd say God sent it. So Dennis, I've got to ask you, uh, especially coming from the background that you've been, um, why church for you? I realized that all my past history that I thought was fun and enjoyable was not. But this mm. is what it was about. Wow. That whenever you experience something, you know how your heart feels good and you just kind of yep. tingle all over. Yep. Every day I walk through the doors, that's the way I feel. How did you come to know the Lord? My parents went to church on occasions. And uh, I was never really forced or required to go to church, so naturally I didn't go. I met my wife-to-be when I was about 16 years old in high school. And one of the things I asked her, or she told me, is that she was a Seventh-day Adventist. I didn't know much about religion, so I said, oh, okay, that sounds good. I told my parents, I said, boy, this lady or this girl that I'm dating is really, really cute, and she's an Adventist. I said, do you know what that means? They go, well, they go to church on Saturday. Oh, okay. So I asked her, I said, do you go to church on Saturday? What does that mean? You know, so she told me all the ins and outs. She showed me the calendar that it is the seventh day. I go, well, that's, that's right. Hmm. I'm, I'm good with that. So years went on, we got married, and I finally decided to give my heart to Jesus. I'm here with Liz Simons. Liz, thanks for joining us. Um, Tell us a little bit about what the vision is behind all the ministries here at Burleson. Pastor Ray, I feel very passionately about service. Mm -hmm. And I feel so strongly that the Bible is clear that we're all gifted. Mm -hmm. And we all have a set of talents, abilities, our past experience, our passions. And God has shaped us for a very specific um, ways that we can serve. We can serve our church, we can serve our community, mm -hmm. and at Burleson we really try to encourage people to find their fit, to get connected to the ministry where all of those things about them that they have uh, learned over the years, their, their talents, their abilities, their passions, they all fit and that they, when they serve where they fit, they're happy, they're productive, and they're successful. So Liz, there are a bunch of ministries in the church. Yes. Tell us a little bit about each one. 
Well, I think we could probably break them into two categories. And first, you have all the various ministries that are involved in uh, church life. Mm -hmm. um, everything from uh, children's ministries, which is teaching the children's classes. We have our youth groups, like um, our equivalent of, of Cub Scouts, Boy Scouts. We call it mm -hmm. Pathfinders and Adventures Club. And um, we have... Um, a green room, I think Maria talked about that. Mm -hmm. We have Vacation Bible School. All those are ministries that you can get involved in in the church. Also, there's deacons and deaconesses, you know, taking care of the church, taking care of the people in the church. Right. Um, there's all kinds of um, ministries like uh, home groups, growth groups, small groups, and social ministries. And Pastor Ryan talked a little bit about our family fireworks. Mm -hmm. And so there's really lots and lots of ways that you can be of service and bless your church through ministry in the church. Mm -hmm. Now, the other area that I'd like to, to focus on a little is our outreach ministries. We have a unique situation here, I think. We have one of our Sabbath school classes, one of our adult classes, is called Love in Action. Mm -hmm. And that's part of our mission statement, finishing the work of Christ through love in action. Wow. And we believe strongly that love has hands and feet. Definitely. And this Sabbath school class takes it very personally, and they spend a good part of their um, lesson time uh, planning outreach projects. Mm -hmm. They fund them themselves. Wow. And they, on Sundays or sometimes even on Sabbath afternoons, they will go and do community service. Hmm. And it is really inspiring. And I think that's what Jesus would do. And right. so that's one of our outreach ministries. We have Project Impact, which I'm sure Pastor Ryan told you about. And that's a chance for families to get together and do kind of a mission trip without leaving town. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's been a huge blessing, too. Um, one of our church members is very involved in foreign missions. So if you're a member here, you can get involved in foreign missions. There's just so many different ways. Mm -hmm. And there's something for everyone. Mm -hmm. Everyone has a fit for a ministry. And if they don't know where they fit, I'd be happy to sit down with them and help them discover where God has uniquely shaped them to fit into service. Thank you so much for joining us today at the Burleson Seventh-day Adventist Church. You've gotten just a little taste of what it's like to worship with us. But if you'd like to check us out a little bit more, we would invite you to do that. Uh, you could check us out online at BurlesonSDA.com. Or if you'd like to check us out in person, we would, we would love to have you come and visit. One of the things that I'm going to ask a little bit about here is, uh, you know, when I walked into church, you know, I was greeted the really nice way, but it's, it's different. Uh, happy Sabbath. Yeah. I mean, what, what's that all about? When someone tells me happy Sabbath, I say yes, it truly is. Even if I might not feel that it is a happy Sabbath, my heart might be heavy, my, my head might be hurting, <laughs> it might have been a really stressful week or, um, stressful situations or just a heavy heart from whatever's going on mm -hmm. but just at that moment you can say yes it truly is a happy sabbath sometimes a little bit by faith huh just yes. like hey you know i'm i'm, I'm trusting god's in control yeah. and um, saying it no matter how i feel yeah yeah. Makes sense. Well, it makes you feel at home. It makes you feel like Absolutely. welcome too, yes. you know, and yes. uh, wishing each other a good day, yeah. you know, that kind of a thing. Yeah. So that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Well, you know, guys, one of the same things I was impressed with the most was um, all the little kids, you know, that, that, that song at the beginning of the service. I mean, that was incredible. The other thing I was impressed with was uh, just the concept of service to the community. It seems like hearing some of the announcements, hearing, you know, the, you know talking to people afterwards, that everybody's geared towards thinking about how to practically serve Burleson. Uh, remember that class, the, the couples class? They right. always have this project to help out an elderly um, 
person in the community mm -hmm. and they find either they need to they need to mow the lawn or they need their house painted and they make it a project in the fall and also in the spring okay. to go out there and they invite the, ch the the families the church families to to come along you know there's some folks that are thinking today you know should i give church a try or in some cases should i give church a try a second time mm -hmm. you know and for whatever reason they've been hurt they've been burned mm -hmm. you know and um what would you say to that why church i would say why not um and with a lot of experiences that I've had with going to church, and there was a time in my life where I really did not want to go to church. Mm -hmm. um, and looking at my life in those two different time periods and mm -hmm. see how our family was doing, see how I was feeling or mm -hmm. how we as a couple were doing if we did not go to church. Um, it's just night and day. And God really wants us to fellowship. Mm -hmm. Does, God doesn't want us to go to church for His sake. Hmm. He wants us to go to church for our sake. And, and truly, that really is what it's all about. It's for us to be uplifted, um, to be encouraged, and to be joyful and have a truly happy Sabbath. Well, guys, it has been a lot of fun today. I just want to thank you for allowing me to tag along with you. And, We're excited uh, you could come visit. Loved you, it. You've got a beautiful church. You've got Thank a beautiful you. family. Thank you. And uh, our thoughts and prayers will be with you guys. And I know that God's going to keep doing big things through you guys as a, as a family and as a church. So Thank thanks you. so much. Yes. Thank you. <laughs>